he still practices medicine the old-fashioned way, but he could be the last of a dying breed. Kelly Mitchell reports on The Last Country Doctor. By Pittsburgh National Bank. By Blue Cross of Western Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. And Thrift Drug. Dr. Peter Saffer and Peter Janetta are both doctors who dared to be different, rebels who shaped the medical world by staunchly fighting for their beliefs. Well, we have one more such story, Dr. Nelson Kennedy of rural Beaver County. He's a rebel in his own right, not so much in the way he practices medicine, but in the way he deals with his patients. Once upon a time, your doctor was like a respected family elder. He knew where you lived, what you did for a living, and whether your family was going through good times or bad. It's that bond between the patient and the doctor that made Dr. Kennedy choose medicine as a profession. While the medical world has been changing all around him, Dr. Kennedy has resisted that change. Now, it's a long way from Pittsburgh, but that didn't keep our Kelly Mitchell from setting out on a quest for the last country doctor. Dr. Nelson Kennedy's office is a long way from the medical world of Pittsburgh, a distance measured not only in miles, but in time. First, you hit the maze of blacktop roads. Along the way, crowded sidewalks are replaced with endless stands of corn. Concrete high-rises change to poplar forest with a haze of summer hanging in the treetops. Even though Dr. Kennedy's office is only an hour and a half drive from Pittsburgh, that hour and a half takes you back 30 years to another era in medicine, an era when your doctor was part of the family. It's noon, and Dr. Kennedy arrives back at the office from his hospital rounds in Beaver. He doesn't work out of a fancy office on Main Street. Dr. Kennedy's office is located in the basement of his house, just off County Road 351, halfway between Darlington and Enon Valley, Pennsylvania. Before the afternoon office hours, the doctor's family gathers, as they do every day, to eat lunch. We thank you for the gift of eternal life through Christ. We pray that you give us wisdom in taking care of the patients this afternoon. For Christ's sake, amen. After lunch, the basement fills with patients. They come from as far as 50 miles away, and they know that if the basement office is closed, they can usually find the doctor upstairs. House calls are rare these days, but Dr. Kennedy still sees his patients in their homes when it's necessary, and he still delivers babies, much as he used to do in the 1950s when he first hung out a shingle in this one-room office in the woods. Since then, three generations of rural families have come to count on not only Dr. Kennedy's medical abilities, but his friendship. I get to know my patients as, as friends and neighbors, not just as patients, and this makes a, makes a real difference. Percy Wilkinson has been seeing Dr. Kennedy since Percy retired from the railroad. He says he finds a warmth present in this practice, a warmth that's missing from other doctors he's visited. He's a real good friend. He's a good man. So I found it real nice here. Another thing, I, I come out here and drop in to get something. I don't need no appointment. I should have an appointment, but like now, we don't have no appointment, but we're just coming in to, I want to, I had a few heart pains, and I want him to tell me about it if you can. What were you doing when you got the chest pain? I was sitting. So you said you still weren't doing anything at all. Huh? Have you eaten recently? Well, I've eaten a meal. And what time did you have, how soon did you have the chest pain? While Dr. Kennedy runs some tests on Percy, the waiting room swells with patients. Two of Dr. Kennedy's daughters serve as receptionists using the latest medical computer system to sort out the steady stream of patients. But beyond the beep of the high-tech computer, you can feel something else in this waiting room, a feeling of family. That's probably what it is. Let me check with Dad. I would get We have no people problem. call up and say, oh, I want you to call in uh, medicine for my grandmother. And they don't even tell us who they are, but we know from their voice who they are and who their grandmother is and, uh, and what drugstore they want. One uh, minister who was, came in for something uh, said something to my dad. He, he kind of chuckled because there was Linda asking one of the farmers if his cow had had his calf yet. 
Out here, everyone knows Doc Kennedy and everybody respects him. But practicing medicine in the country can have its disadvantages, especially when it comes to paying the bill. Yeah, we were paid with a chicken, or two chickens, I guess, in a, in a gunny sack. And one of the chickens got away. We heard it crowing out in the woods there and never did catch that one. The other one we killed and ate it was pretty, uh, pretty tough, but we, we ate the other chicken. Practicing rural medicine means many of the doctor's patients are poor and not covered by medical insurance. Despite skyrocketing medical costs, the price schedule at Dr. Kennedy's is enough to give medical school graduates the shivers. Dr. Kennedy staunchly resists raising his prices, partly because he feels responsible for his patients. We have a terrible time getting him to increase his prices, and you know, I just that's just not why he's in it. He's in it to to meet the needs of people, not to make big bucks. The afternoon office hours continue, and the test results come in on Percy Wilkinson. For Dr. Kennedy, it's one of the toughest parts of the job. Uh, you could be having a very mild heart attack. Uh, safe thing to do would be put you in the hospital for a couple of days. you probably get along fine at home, but hardly worthwhile to take a chance. Um, uh, i got to consider mom. Yeah, I'll go have a talk to her about it, OK? I'm her right hand. Man there. Yeah. Uh, she'll be isolated without me. Yeah, but I'm afraid she wouldn't be happy if you didn't go. She's the one that brought you here, right? Well, she talked me into it. Yeah, okay, let's talk to her first. <laughs> Dr. Nelson Kennedy recently celebrated his 71st birthday here, and he realizes retirement is not very far off. He's been actively looking for a successor for a few years now, but it's been difficult to find a young doctor willing to take on the practice. Medical knowledge continues to grow at an astronomical rate, but sometimes, in the rush to move ahead, we trample the good with the bad. With the retirement of Dr. Nelson Kennedy, an era of medicine will end, an era when doctors cared not so much about symptoms, but about the whole person, how they fit into their families, and how their lives affect their health. And when retirement does come, Dr. Kennedy hopes he's remembered. As a friend, uh, I, I've attempted to share my faith with my patients. I think this is important. Uh, uh, one of us is going to die eventually, and I'd like to meet them all in heaven someday. I try to encourage them to uh, look forward to that. The new generation of medicine will eventually reach Darlington and Enon Valley. People will drive to clean, cold offices in the city, sit in waiting rooms full of strangers to see doctors who may know them only as names on a chart. And although those doctors will undoubtedly have better medical knowledge and better treatments, the question remains, will those patients really be better off? I'm Kelly Mitchell.